Welcome to Lose Gavolt. I'm Daniel. I'm Rex. This is a gift yes. from Cliff Smith, a patron saint. Cliff Smith, you patron saint of whiskey. I did. The that was on this. That time. was on point. Like we were the on the we were beat, time. Bam! Just the whole thing. That's like the example. That's the example. Look, the standard comparison. I just want you to remember the last video we did. Yeah. Where a 28 year old Scotch looked like pale Sauvignon Blanc. It was a light struggle. And this is like two years old. Right. At least. It looks like Coca Cola. <laughs> <laughs> it looks so, like a dark soda. Uh, duly noted for everybody, Andalusia is a distillery down the road from us, only about 40 minutes away. They are friends of ours. Yep, good deal. Uh, we are actually, I've worked, we've released their whiskey through our distillery. Yes, not we this We know one. them, we love them, right. and we love their whiskey. So we'll try to be objective, but human beings are human beings, and you know, we'll do, we'll do the best we can. Yes. Now, that doesn't hurt that they're just great people. Annoyingly good. Like, you, <laughs> you feel like a worse person being around them because they're so aggressively good. Yeah. Okay. It's just really not fair to the rest of the world. This cool. is a gift. Cliff Smith went down there on one of their uh, releases. Yeah. And this was the first time they'd ever let you bottle your own bottle oh, from a single barrel. Oh, uh, right. Right? Oh, yeah. And he donated this to the vault. Oh, Now, that cool. was, like, December. Okay, okay, yeah, that was. <laughs> it's been a while. That was a hot minute. But we finally got to it. Mm -hmm. uh, this is their striker, where they use the peat shed to smoke, or they use the sh the smoke shed on their property to yep. smoke the malt. Yep. But instead of using peat, right, they're using uh, various hardwoods. Oh. So striker is their smoked malt, but using hardwood, Texas style barbecue style, yeah. instead of peat. So, the the nose on this, the thing that jumps out to me is. Dark, smoky, and oily. Oh, it is. This is uh, beef jerky. Yeah. But like a teriyaki beef jerky. Like, yeah, that's like savory. Like the flavored sweet that savory. That savory, smoky quality. And then you can just the oiliness on this. So you can. This is the kind of whiskey, you know, if you drop some, waters in, uh, some water drops in here, um, this thing would definitely change up and come alive and offer you oh, something yeah. different. Wow, then, that is so pre uh, like yeah. meat Do we heavy. know how much of this was peated? Uh, or not peated, it's all smoked. the grain. Not not peated. I mean smoked. Yeah, I think it's all the grain. Okay, we've got another non-single barrel so this, version. This is 100. percent Yeah, I we've mean, got the non-single barrel version too. The color difference. I'm yeah. thinking. Yeah, the single barrel version. That's darker, for sure. Oh, that is <laughs> such a great. No this is going to be a separator like Lafroig, no. right? Where it's like either you're in your home turf or. Right. You can't handle it. This is, yeah, this is not going to be mass market sweet and friendly and light and you know, a little bit of vanilla and maybe if you want to get crazy, it's a caramel. And I mean, these are like big, heavy, swinging cod flavors. I keep coming back to a slight brown sugar note, but it keeps getting buried by this like soy sauce note. I would say, well, imagine that, but almost like a, like a burnt brown sugar. It's starting to get caramelized. Yeah, it's so to get for me, it's that caramelized, but then there's there's actual soy sauce. Oh yeah, you know, that savory note for sure. I would attribute that more to, you, you mentioned like a beef jerky type of mm -hmm. savory. It was almost like a meaty savoriness along with that smoky element. Oh man, that's so good. Yeah. Sunny beaches. Yeah, yeah. Come on! See? That goes for days! Yeah, yeah. And there's like uh, this wood varnish quality on the taste. Yeah. It's so oily. The oakiness really com comes alive on the flavor. And it just coats your entire palate in yeah. every direction. Yeah, no, it's the finish is still going strong. Okay, try to compare that without proofing, and then we're gonna add water to it. Yeah. But try to compare it to the one that they typically release at oh. 50%. It's a different animal. Like Whereas the, this one is... The smoke character... The smoke character completely envelops the first one we tried. This is at like 61, 62%. Oh, it's way more tamed down. Oh. And the wood comes to the front instead of the sweetness coming it to does. the front. And there's almost this, um, like a little bit of a coffee note. Yeah. Yeah. But at cask strength, coffee note, a little bit of like a, like a tea uh, quality. A sweeter, the meaty protein smoke wins. A sweeter tea quality. Uh, I think oh, of the two. One of those is your water. I think of the two. Uh, just for like nice easy sipping, mm -hmm. I like the original. If I want to go on funky adventure, this smoky behemoth 
that's the way to go. But if I just want to relax, man, just the standard Andalusia Striker smoked single malt. <laughs> I'm telling you, that oiliness. Add a little water. Which one? Ugh, to the cast drink. To the smoky. Woo wee! That just comes out to get you. Yeah, those oily, like you'll see a lot of people talking about um, in the I'm articles talking about, have you had a few drops of whiskey? It's a magical thing. Yeah, they've been doing it for generations. <laughs> it's relatively new um, in terms of the popular whiskey culture here in the States, but they've yeah. been doing this forever and ever in other countries. Uh, and it's typically going to be your more oily whiskey. At first. Yeah. At first. If you give it time, it'll settle. Wow, wow, wow. wow. Yeah. But if you, if you pour a little water and then immediately sip, You've just shoved all the oils I mean, to the top. Even on the nose, even on the nose, it wakes up that smoke. <laughs> it's like you're putting your head over a campfire. Yeah, I'm gonna put a little ice in this because I'm wondering what smoky ice would taste like. Man. And then the brown sugar. You know what a really big brown sugar shows up in the smoky thing? After you add a little bit of water. And then, all right. that, and then that wood varnish. On the rocks, baby. These are big, you know, these are big, uh, heavy, smoky. hefty flavors. Mm -hmm. These are not for the light. It did not get mild. These it are not stayed aggressive. These are not for the faint of heart. So here's the thing, man. Oh, dude. Whoa. No, don't do that. Don't do the ice? No. Okay. All you now taste is oil, varnish, and wood. Okay. All the sugar's gone. So this is a whiskey designed for a neat pour. Yes. Okay. The ice just completely made Yo. it only oil and wood. Even on the nose, it does tame a lot of that sweetness. Oh. It, it leaves the smoke alone. That was and a mistake. The sweeter qualities, yeah. <laughs> Woo! Yeah. Just oil and wood. Yeah, 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 yeah. All right, we got the Matt Skimbo. Admit it! We all have a guilty pleasure. One that you like, but are sure will bring jokes. What is it? I gotta think, man. Was my, so we already, know, we already know about my Tabasco Slim Jims. That's yeah. Not, yeah, it's kind of, it is what it is. Um, what about in whiskey? Ferraro Rocher chocolate, is oh, that? Those are good. I like those. No, those are just good. Yeah, yeah. Unapologetically. Um, oh, gummy bears? I like gummy bears. That's not it. It's gotta be a whiskey guilty pleasure. A whiskey guilty pleasure? Yeah, like liking Fireball or something. Uh, man, I mean, it's, I'm just like, again, <laughs> I'm so comfortable with the idea if you drink whatever the hell you like, whatever you're in the mood for, however you like to drink it, um, if anybody's going to give you about it, then, you know, go. <laughs> yeah, I agree with that. Or ignore them. It doesn't matter. It's just whiskey. Can I tell you, I really like Bailey's Irish Cream on you the know, rocks. I've had that in a coffee. Mm -hmm. Speaking of, I think in the last episode, we're talking about going to Waterford oh, and, yeah, how, yeah. and how butthurt we are. Yeah. Uh, the woman next to me, we sit down, first flight. I was like, oh man, here we go. It's going to be some long traveling. And, you know, the, the lady came over and asked for food. She said, uh, Bailey's and coffee. Yeah. That sounds good. I'll have one too. Kind of great. It's delicious. Yeah. Try just Bailey's on the rocks. Oh. Just iced Bailey's. Okay. It's like an iced coffee treat. All right. Like cream treat, right? No, that is embarrassing. That and is. And I, I will totally right. do and that. That's the thing where we can begin the job. I'm kidding. Yeah, exactly. Uh, Maruf Hosse Hossein. Why so many. Why so many whiskey names start with Glenn? Okay, now he got answered. Though everybody in the tribe knew exactly what the answer to this was, it or like they Googled it. River, water. It just means valley. valley. Glenn means valley. All right. And so it's a, it's a location. Here's where our whiskey's from, the Glenn so-and-so, mm -hmm. right? But my favorite answer was the one that I pasted underneath oh. there. From Ryan Martin, his reply says, whiskey was invented by Ole Glenn Ole <laughs> in 1274 AD. Folks would come by for a dram with Glenn, and the name stayed. Cheers to Glenn, a man with moxie. <laughs> I double checked that. That's accurate. Yeah, fact check it on uh, the Wikipedia, Whiskey Wikipedia, Whiskeypedia is. Yeah, Glenn O'Riordan invented whiskey in 12. 1274. 74. Is there a Wikipedia? There should be. There should be. Should we secure Wikipedia before this episode goes out? There's got to be a Wikipedia. There has to be a Wikipedia. You think there is? I promise you that there may be a Wikipedia. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm curious. I'm just going to wait. Wikipedia with no E. Dot com's taken. Okay. Okay. Well, hopefully you're doing something with it, not just camping out on it. You haven't asked about 
my situation. With an E taken. What situation? Your shirt? Same shirt? But no, I have this like big water. You have a water stain? If she's... It's hard to tell. Oh, now I can see. If I look down where there's no lettering. Right. What happened? It's none of your business. <laughs> Didn't care enough to ask. Yeah, evidently. No, we're setting up for maybe some podcasty stuff in the future. Scotchwhiskey.com ticket. Oh, good. Hopefully they're doing something with it, not just camping the out. The world of whiskey. Because but it's all about Scotland. Okay, they're doing something with it. Fine. Yeah. That's, I hate it as whenever, long as they're doing something. I hate it whenever you, there's like a cool domain and somebody's just sitting on it for years there. All right, anyways, uh, we're setting up for like potential live stream podcasty stuff. Right. And Alex is getting the shots. Okay. And he was the only person watching. Okay. And there was a moment where he was swinging the camera around and I knew the camera's going to pan on me and he's going to see my face. I need to be doing something ridiculous. Ridiculous. So I did just a spit take where I dribbled down myself and locked eyes with the camera because that's how much I care about the lulls, Daniel. It can be unrecorded for one person, and I'll still dribble bullshit all over me. Here's to fighting, stealing, and drinking. That's a weird brag. <laughs> weird flex, bro. Weird flex. <laughs> if you fight, you fight for a friend. You steal me, you steal your liver's heart. And if you drink, may, may you, you drink, drink with us. us.